Hi, this is Keegan with TRX Dinosaurs. This is a tutorial for making this trilobot, the Cambrian Cleaner. It's a cover for a automated vacuum like a Roomba. It's inspired by the Common Descent podcast. We did an episode on trilobites and they called them the undersea Roombas, which I thought was funny. So I made one out of EVA foam. You can download the template from our Patreon, which is TRX Dinosaurs on Patreon. And it's a PDF. When you open up that PDF, it should open up in Adobe Reader. Then when you go to print, you're going to need to upscale it to meet the size of your vacuum. So make sure you clicked on poster. And then I went up um, at least 220%. I actually printed even larger than that for this tutorial, but I went way too big. So probably somewhere around 200, 220 should be good for you. When you print it out, it's going to have edges around every piece of paper. So you're going to want to cut off at least one side uh, you want to leave one side so that you have something to glue to or tape to. Um, if you cut them off both sides, you're going to not have a lot to grab onto. Because I wanted to avoid using tape, I use spray adhesive, something I use regularly. When you use spray adhesive, definitely wear gloves because stuff's pretty nasty, and wear a respirator because you don't want to be breathing in spray glue. Once you have all of the pieces glued together, you can go ahead and cut it out. I used a box cutter to cut it out, but this would be a lot easier with an X-Acto blade. Definitely use a sharp blade. Then I used a five millimeter thick piece of EVA foam. This is the cosplay foam that's readily available at most fabric stores, but you can also order it online. I used spray adhesive on the back so that the template wouldn't move around when I was cutting it out. You only get really one shot at this, so make sure you do it right the first time. With that glued down, then you can go to cutting it out. Again, the sharper the blade is, the easier this is going to be. It's kind of frustrating if you're using a dull blade like I was. Now, what you can do is trace all the line work with that same blade. And you're obviously you're not cutting through the foam, you're just cutting through through the paper, which leaves a little bit of a mark on the foam, which gives you line work to work from when it comes to soldering in the detail. So you use a soldering iron and definitely use a respirator. I use a full face respirator when I solder foam because the smoke is also pretty gnarly. You definitely don't want to breathe this stuff in. You're going to want to do this outside in a well ventilated area, definitely not around other people because stuff is nasty and you want to protect your lungs. Obviously, you're not cutting all the way through. You're melting just a little bit on the top to give the detail. So take your time with it. Then once you've got that done, definitely make sure that it is the right size. And then you're going to see where you're going to want to bend that piece. So obviously, you're on the front and sides and the back. So to do that, you use a heat gun. You can buy a heat gun at most hardware stores. Um, you can also get them online pretty affordably. Again, you're also going to want to use a respirator when you do this because it's going to off-gas, definitely outside or well-ventilated area. And you can see moving the heat around, it's going to close up the cells, which is good uh, because it makes it easier to paint eventually if you want to go that route, but it's also allows you to see what areas you've already hit. So you want to keep moving back and forth because if you keep this heat on just one spot, it's going to bubble up and distort really quickly. But you can see how quickly it's already starting to soften. And again, five millimeters, it is pretty easy to move around and shape the way you want. I'm wearing gloves not because I needed to for doing this process, mostly just because I've been wearing them when I was doing this very piece of you can see that it's already starting to distort. So while it's still warm, you're going to want to start to shape it. And then this actually will cool down really pretty quickly. So while you still have it warm, you want to force it into the shape that you really want. And you can be rougher than you think because it's going to bounce back a little bit. So just keep working it until it cools.
this doesn't have to be perfect the first time because you're going to go back and do it again. So you're just really trying to just get those rough shapes. You can see how quickly it already starts to hold its form. So once you've got that, you can go ahead and heat up anywhere else you're going to put in a bend or a seam. So again, just working back and forth over an area. And it's really a good idea to heat up both front and back side because you'll get a much better seam and it's going to stay in shape a lot better. So now you can go ahead and heat up along the edges to curve those down. You can be a lot rougher than you think you actually should be because the foam is pretty forgiving. And again, if you did mess up anything, you can just hit it again with heat. It'll soften back out and you can do it again. So you're just going to keep heating this up, shaping the pieces that you want, letting them cool, heating up another section, reshaping them. And then every time you hit this with heat, it's going to deform and a lot of the work that you've done will seem like it's have gone back. And again, just hit it with a little bit more heat and reshape. I find that pinching the foam can give you a lot better seam. Again, this seems like it's going to be harsh on the foam, but really once it flexes back out, it's not too big of a deal. So you can see how it's going to start to look on your Roomba or your vacuum. You can see areas that you need to work on to make them mold to the shape a little bit better. Obviously you don't want to 
heat up the foam sitting on the Roomba because you don't want to melt any sort of internal electronics motors or anything like that. So just be mindful. Doing the eyes, I only heated on one side because I wanted them um, to only really bend on one side, but you'd obviously heat this on both sides as well. You can also shape and deform the foam when it's cool. So it's going to take more work and it's going to be a little bit less likely to stay. All right, so now for the antennas. There's antennas in the template, but I ended up just hand drawing them because I wanted to change them up a little bit. So you can make your own, or again, use the ones that are in the template. Go ahead and cut those out. And then once you cut it out, you can use this same piece as a template to do a mirror of it on another piece of foam. So I'll just go ahead and, ahead and trace that. And another piece of scrap foam, cut that out. And then I took a Dremel tool and Dremeled down the edges so that they weren't square, a little bit round to it. You could obviously go um, use a thicker piece of foam and get totally round pieces, but I just wanted to stick with one piece of 5 millimeter. Then you can go ahead and test where you want those antenna placement, and then using a little bit of contact cement or contact glue that you can buy at pretty much any hardware store, add some to one side and then rub the excess onto the other piece because you really don't need a lot of glue, you need just like a thin layer for them to have a good grab. And then do the same on the inside. And what I like to do is just use a scrap piece of foam that's laying around to spread out a thin layer. You obviously are gonna wanna go larger than the area that you think you need, just so that you've got flexibility, make sure you've got a good adherence. I really should be wearing gloves when I do this gluing because the contact cement is also pretty gross. And then make sure you do it right the first time because there's really only one shot at it. So to paint this, I use Plasti Dip, which you can get, get at most hardware stores. Went ahead and sprayed it, just one coat. And then using a sticky packed Velcro to mount it onto the vacuum itself. So you're going to cut out equal parts of A and B. And then decide where you want to mount it. I figured this was the highest part on the front, so I just needed the little, little piece to stick on there. Get the right shape and size, and then you just pull off the sticky back and stick it on. This is semi-permanent. You can pull the Velcro off, but it might leave behind residues, so just be mindful of that. want to then test out how the shell fits and where you should mount the opposite side of that velcro. So hold on, do it with your finger, then mark it with a marker. Make sure you're using the opposite side versus the same fuzzy or then you're going to want to see where you're going to want to mount that. 
on the back side as well. So it's mounted on the front and wanted to make sure that it would have a secure mount on the back. So I decided to go on the back edge and then repeat the same process. And that's it. So then all you gotta do is put your hand underneath to turn it on, or if you use an app, you can do it that way. And you've got yourself a cambering cleaner, try the buff. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you'd like more tutorials and templates, you can join our Patreon, TRX Dinosaurs Patreon, through our website, trxdinosaurs.com, or on Instagram, at trxdinosaurs. Thanks so much.